TGV from the Urban Gentry and Mark at Long Island Watch have collaborated to make a brand new watch. And I've got one to show you. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. So yes, very excited today because I'm only one of a few reviewers that get my hands on one of these before anyone else. Now these two guys may not agree, but I'm pretty sure last Christmas I had something to do with this. Well, I'm up for it, Mark. If you I'm want up, to do I'm it. up. Good. There you go. They, you heard it here first, we guys. We should ask the audience what they would like to see. Oh, but anyway, it was eventually going to happen and fans of the Urban Gentry and Long Island Watch are going to absolutely yum this up. Before I saw the watch, I tried to imagine what this thing was going to look like, you know? We know that TGV loves his Rolex, he loves Tudor, he loves Seiko. Mark at Long Island Watch also loves Seiko. And I'm just imagining some homage amalgamation, oozing vintage with a modern build. And having handled one of Mark's Islanders in the past, this thing is going to be built very well. And for the retail price of $369, you're going to get a lot for your money. I had a feeling this is going to be more of a feel tool watch inspired by the Rolex Explorer with a twist of military prowess. I'm truly honoured to be one of the reviewers to get my hands on this watch first and I think there's no time like the present. Are you collaboration ready? Let's go! So here it is, the Range Master. What a name. Copyright checked. But just that name gives me Omega vibes as well as Tudor vibes. And as we can see with this beauty, we've got some great heavy inspiration. What a tooly mother lover. First of all, I'm getting the do all, do everything type of vibes. This can be your work watch, your weekend watch, your exploring watch. The proportions look spot on and I think they've nailed the overall look. The case is definitely heavily inspired by the Seiko Saab 033. We know that TGV loves that watch. For anyone that does own that Saab 033, knows that the first thing to scuff up is that polished bezel. Well, on this Range Master, the bezel is brushed, giving that extra tooly tough look. It's just a beautiful case. I love the step down to the polishing on the sides. Awesome crown at three o'clock, which is signed with the Islander logo. The watch feels really good in the hands. It doesn't feel too heavy and it doesn't feel too light. Light. And first impressions, I think this could be a winner. Quick spec check. So the case is 38 millimeters in diameter. It's 10 millimeters thick, which is incredible. Seeing that this is a watch with an automatic movement, it's 44 and a half lug tip to lug tip, a strapaholic lug width of 20 millimeters, and a weight of just under 130 grams. Absolutely spot on sizes for me. This will not only slip under a cuff, but as the crown is screwed in, as well as the screw in case back, this watch gives us 100 meters of water resistance, so pretty much you can do anything with this watch. We've got a sapphire glass protecting the dial, and it has anti-reflective coating on the inside. Now let's take a look at the case back. Oh, for f <coughs> Darling, could you put some alphabetty spaghetti on the hob, please? I'm feeling a little tender. <laughs> Ooh -ha 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 -ha. And welcome to another episode of the Design House, where we take a look at a watch's case back. And today, collaboration between two giant watch figures in the YouTuber space. Do it all tool watch. Let's see what they've come up with. Ha ha ha. Oh well, very unusual. It looks like a medal or a or a badge of honor. The two brands twix side by side. No text around the case back. Who needs fine print anyway? Ah, lovely frosting to the stainless steel. What a very unique way of doing things. <laughs> and there you go, simplistic yet very effective. Something I must remember. <laughs> I'll see you next time for another edition of the Design House. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Darling, is my alphabet spaghetti ready yet? Yes, dear. Yes. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. 
Thank you. I've got to say, I do love the bracelet. Has a really nice taper to it. Three link oyster style. Solid end links, solid links. We've got screw pins, which are fantastic. And keeping on the theme of fantastic, I really love this clasp. Take a look at the TGV Lion Emblem. It's a milled clasp, very well done. And even though it is a small clasp, we still have three micro adjusts. Okay, let's take a look at the face. Dial time. Fantastic military matte black dial. I love the chapter ring stroke re-hole around it. This has been inspired by Mark's Breitling Aerospace. Love the touch of red at the 12 o'clock. I also love the minute track with the gap either side of 12. That is a military maneuver to help with the hacking of the seconds hand. But get a load of those trapezoids, will ya? Straight out of the Seiko Monster playbook, I feel. Monster Gen 2. Love those monster teeth. Everything's printed on this dial with heavy application of loom. We got the little tip of the hat to the Explorer with the three, six and nine numerals. I do love the touch of having both brandings either end of the hand stack. And then we start to get our Tudor influences. Under the word Islander, we have the word self-winding, which was in previous iterations of the Tudor Ranger. That Tudor inspiration continues on with the handset. I really do like the Arrow handset. I don't think it's used that often and I particularly love the little tip of red on the seconds hand. Another nod to the Tudor Ranger. All in all a very tastefully done dial that has vintage vibes but also modern playful ones. I think they did a good job. So we got loom on the handset and loom on those trapezoids. Let's have a look how it does in the dark. So a not bad score out of 10. I think I could have charged it for a bit longer, but we have a lovely blue BGW9 luminescence. Maybe another little nod to Rolex's chroma light glow, which is bluish. Nice touch. Inside the watch, we've got a Myota 9039. A no date. <laughs> Hacking hand winding movement, which is automatic, 28,800 beats per hour with 40 hours of power reserve. It's a great little engine. The only thing I would say is when you're operating it, myotas tend to be a little bit gravelly. You less feel like you're winding a watch up and more like you're pushing an old Fiesta across a gravel road. But it's a very good workhorse. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist, and this watch fits me. Perfectly. I love 38 millimeter watches, particularly field ones. Even though this watch looks simple, there is a lot of detail to it. From the dimensions to the water tightness, this is one of those one watch collection watches, isn't it? I love how there is just enough influences with watches from the past, with the modern build. These guys have made something quite nice here, haven't they? I love the fact there's no date and it's so goddamn thin. Give us the negatives. In an ideal world, World, I'd love a Swiss movement in there. Something with a nice wind. Even though this Myota 9039 beats away the same, it's just not massively great to play with, you know? Not that you should be playing with it. It's a tool watch after all, not a fancy luxury one. I would probably have tweaked the dial just a little bit. I probably would have taken away the Islander logo from the dial, put the line crest up below the 12, had the text Islander a little bit bigger, and then another line with the water resistance, as well as the cool self-winding part. You've got that Islander logo on the crown as well as the case back and that would have given it just a little bit more of a vintage look. But that's just me. Now the guys have only made 500 of these watches. I personally think they're going to sell like hotcakes and if you do have the money to spare you won't go wrong with taking a punt on one of these. Here it is my wife's first impressions of the Range Master. <laughs> I don't like the squash numbers on the dial. I'm not sure of the big flat bit of the bezel. Whole watch looks like a compass. I wouldn't have said that was a bad review. <laughs> Thank you once again to TGV and to Mark at Long Island Watch for giving me the opportunity to show this watch off to you first. If you've watched till the end of this show, thank you. Subscribe. And if you'd like to get more from the Mad Watch Collector channel, click the join button right there. And why don't you stay with me for a bit longer? Take a look at this show. This is a beauty. Oh, some of my finest work. <laughs> yeah, click it. Go on, click it. Come on. Click it. You can get a cup of tea in a minute. Click it. Click. Click it!